are an advantage in terms of safety uh, with regard to um, getting rear-ended and pulling someone over. I mean, I think that's a, that's a new consideration I've never considered before. So I'd like to at least revisit it from the point of view of uh, phasing in uh, maybe one more rather than both uh, at once. Well, do we have any history of being rear-ended with the old weapons? No room. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. You can but I mean, if it's you know waiting for the horse to get loose before we lock the barn door, I don't. If you can make a case for it, I don't. I don't think we need to revisit. We're not talking about a substantial sum here. The three proposals before us: to spend three thousand dollars for two, fifteen hundred for one, or zero for none. How many want to spend three thousand dollars? How many want to spend fifteen hundred? I'll go along with fifteen hundred. How many want to spend zero? Carl, you're not voting again. I'm just saying. Oh. Time to vote, Carl. I'm just it's first time to vote. I'm sorry. This is a workshop, right? This is a workshop where we're making some decisions. Making consensus. Okay, it is a consensus that vote. we're cutting three thousand. It's three to three to two, right? We like to have everybody be part of the solution. Everybody participate. Okay, the cruiser replacement. This is for replacing just one cruiser at the tune of 16,000. And you said if we didn't replace any cruisers, we would need at least 1,500 back in the maintenance account. 1,500 per unit, so 3,000. Well, we'd need an additional 1,500 if you dropped this other car. Yes. Right, maybe. Okay, we would have to yeah. add 1500 to the maintenance account if we dropped the second cruiser replacement. We have a net savings of 14.5. Yeah. Discussion? Is that just a side chain? No, I, I, I was just wondering from the other figures, does that mean we would have to refurbish any vehicles in no, this that's, budget? No, that's, that's kind of a menu of what could happen oh. to the cars if we want to put them back in top condition. But, you know, you're talking about an emergency response vehicle with 200,000 miles on it at the end of the second year. So it's, it's quite two possible. Like that. Excuse me? That's right. Two of them. Yeah. 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 You'd never have to do everything. You, you'd never have to do no, absolutely have to do everything. everything. I mean, if you, it gives well, you an idea of, of what those types of things cost you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. What we do know is that you would have to find $32,000 in next year's budget. So I think the idea of, of your one and, and see how long that goes, we'll try it for the one year and then see if one is enough next year and maybe we'll get into a policy where we can stretch these a little bit, but I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't take you down to none for this year, yeah. myself. Yeah. I, th I think we really want to be careful about that too and believe me, it was a fear that I had when, when Mike and I talked about eliminating one car, is I really don't want to get into this uh, mindset of, of running cars two years. Uh, I think in two years we are going to be desperate for cruisers, so it's not something I want to do every year. What I would propose this year, Irv, is to take the two new cars that we receive and try to store them somewhere and, and literally run our other cars as long as we possibly can. If we can get to, uh, we'd normally trade them in April, we'd normally trade them next month. If we can go to December, so much the better, and that's what I try to do. Storage is another matter where we're going to find a place for them, but that, that's what I would propose that was the direction of the council. You're going to realize with all of these things that we talk about, Chief, are, as we're looking at it today, and things very well if this economy of ours picks up and so forth, and things change after June, why we may be in an entirely different situation. But right now, I think you being able to get along with one for now is a very good solution. Myself. I think that's, I think it's workable. Phyllis. Didn't you say with special benefits and everything else, we might be able to reduce that amount to 13000 Special benefits. Uh, trade in. Trade -ins. Trade -ins. The, the net cost of the town would be 13000 yes. So, um, depending on what we get for a trade in. You know, if we get, uh, you know, that's. That would be that the best. Year, yeah. That would be right. the best case scenario, I would think. Yeah, I can tell you, last year, I think we, it seemed to me I'd factored in like a 3%, 4% anticipated increased cost per unit for, for each of these cruisers. We went out to bid this year, and I think it was nearly. 10% higher. Not only did the cost of the cars go up $2,000 per copy, but they reduced dealer incentives by 1000 bucks. I mean, it was just it was blindsided us. I mean, we called the dealers and asked them what their sense was last year, and uh, we were way off base. The dealers were way off base, so this is my best estimate as anything this year. But, you know, 
with some, some things we can't consider. Chief, have you heard anything from uh, Scarborough on the uh, worthwhileness of the major investment that they made in the Volvo cruisers? I mean, yeah, it, in terms of being on the road as long as they thought they'd be on the road. They had some pretty good success with it. Number one, as you know, it's an extremely safe automobile. And they had officers that were in some very, very serious accidents because of the way the vehicle was designed. They thought that they saved, you know, significant injuries from officers, uh, on officers. Problem is, Volvo no longer makes a police package production model automobile. So to order, order that car that would be set up for police work would cost you significantly more money. So there's really no, um, uh, no you know, there's no production vehicle offered except uh, Ford and General Motors. Ford has got, just don't want to talk to us. I don't think we've gotten a bid from Ford in the last three years. So we're kind of GM conscious. Just one comment. Uh, I didn't budget in miscellaneous revenue the, uh, the income from the sale of the cruises but because I, I didn't think that we were really selling any. We're going to be worth anything. If we, if we decide to keep these and keep them on the, the road and get parts out of them. Well, so we, we would have one that we That's why the 16 is there and not 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We would have one that would be traded, that's yeah. all, but we, under this present scenario. Uh, so we and, could... And probably not a significant amount of money. So we could, pro we could probably add 1,000 to revenue. I think we could probably do that. And again, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen between now and then. If we have a car that gets wrapped up, then there goes our savings. Not that that would happen. I'd be more comfortable if we get to this point of adding a thousand to revenue than decreasing the sixteen thousand. I mean, in offsets, but just to be a little more accurate for line item. Okay, I want to go around again and get a feel for um, counselors' thoughts on cruiser replacement. There's sixteen thousand budgeted. That would let us replace one cruiser out of three. That's correct. Okay. I'm not sure if you always realize that we have three cruisers. Okay, Phyllis. Fine. Wayne? Yep. Carl? Question. Sir? 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 Uh, they're always replaced in April. Is there any benefit <coughs> to replace a cruiser every six months and stagger the three cars so that you've always got every six months instead of getting two out of a year? Well, to take advantage of the, of the bid system, I think, is why that, that's scheduled that way. We're really at the mercy of GM. In fact, we just heard that normally we do take uh, delivery in April. And we've heard that due to their you know, redesigning their plants and shutting plants down. They're not even sure where these vehicles are going to be made this year. They think they're going to be made in Texas now, or they used to be made in, in Detroit, so or in Canada. So uh, we may not take delivery until June. Uh, we we tried to put different caveats in our in our bids too to ensure that we take you know we have delivery by Christmas, just as it's going to happen. They happen. They have a regular production cycle when they make all police cruises. So depending on when GM wants to do it, depends on when we, we have to take delivery of them. So they only have one production yeah. for yeah. Fine. It's also less competition in the cruiser market than they used to be. Absolutely. Definitely. I'll go along with this. Herb, Jane, Bill. I'll go along with it, but I want to revisit. I want to be allowed to revisit in case we find a windfall somewhere else along the way. Call, call yeah, me up. Up. Do you want to revisit Billy with the with the hope that we would be able to replace both? Yes. Okay. So, you, but you're definitely for the one. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. And why I say that is that I might revisit it with the idea and still go with one cruiser and get that uh, recording system for the dispatch center. I think that's a crucial system that we ought to. Okay, where's your preference going to be for for one more one more cruiser, cruiser or the recording system? One more cruiser, and I'll make that decision when the time comes. Do I go another cruiser or the recording? So system? you're not going to give me that answer, okay? We'll visit the two times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else on this account? That's about all they have listed. <laughs> right, that's all under the regular police. Yes, two ten accounts. Mm -hmm. Two tens. That brings us to 215. Do you have any opening comments? Uh, this is animal I, control. I think we've got one real positive comment about this. Uh, we were successful at the council, uh, Mills and Dudley, by now in, in finding another uh, 
repository for our stray animals. We no longer deal with ARL. We deal with uh, Abbott, God, Wyndham, and uh, Henry Brady, our animal control officer, did a lot of work in that, and it's as much to his credit as it is to mine. We've been able to reduce that one account from 4500 bucks to 750 and I think that's probably one of the high points of my budgeting career. <laughs> <laughs> Going hard, too. For more reasons than just saving money. more reasons. <laughs> that, I remember the lengthy discussions and the discomfort the council was feeling about that situation a year ago, and I'm delighted with the outcome of your efforts on that. We were being held hostage. Absolutely. We're being held hostage by the Animal <laughs> Refuge <laughs> League. <laughs> yes, we certainly were. <clears throat> we don't like that, not the anybody else does. Do you have any idea how many dogs you, know, you pick up in a year? 25? Uh, what, well, let me put it this way. 25 are taken to the ARL. That's the number that we base this the $750 figure on. Uh, but, you know, we pick up significantly more than that that are claimed by the owner by the time we get back to the station. Them, and I'm not sure exactly how many that is, but as far as the ones that are taken to, uh, to shelters, uh, it's 25. Obviously, this gentleman does things other than pick up dogs. Yeah, he does, and in fact, uh, he was responsible for a fairly significant amount of fines last year for, for dogs at large and other places that we, we operated on. So. so there's some revenue being generated? It, you know, there's some revenue being generated. Of course, uh, you know, we do some utility work at the station. Uh, it's kind of our go for as well. Uh, does some work for the fire department as well. So it's, it's truly what we call a utility position. It certainly is multi-purpose. Even though all the payroll is shown under this account. Yeah. This person does work in other areas yeah. as well. This, this would also be another position which wouldn't receive a raise next year, even though it's, it's not a management position, it's not covered under the contract, so I maintain that, that same salary. I've also, also got to tell you, we, 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 we've operated this position in part-time mode before. It's extremely difficult to get anybody excited about, you know, going out and just chasing dogs for 20 hours a week. Uh, and I think one year we replaced it three times, maybe. I mean, it's just real difficult to get anybody committed to do that. It's tough, tough to have control on somebody. Um, in this economy, you, you may get somebody just great on paper and does get another job and leaves and we have to replace it. And we have that, you know, hiatus in the interim where we don't have anybody responding to calls or that quickly. So. As you can see on page 93, we did look at uh, full time versus trying to do it part time. The, the savings would be five thousand one hundred twenty-three dollars, but you know, as the chief explains, uh, you know, there, there are disadvantages as well in trying to come up with that savings. I've, I'm wondering if any counselors want you to talk about the full-time, part-time situation. I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I see at least three negatives. I think we ought to get moving because we're yeah. far away behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I want to go through these. Okay. Um, this, I'm on page 91 in, a, in the big book and page 11 of the printout you got this morning. Full time payroll, 18,355. Some of these are not in the book. Um, Social Security, 1,407. Main. Yeah. Retirement plan 917, disability 147, health insurance 5,111, workers' comp 1,278, <coughs> impoundment, fees and services 750, ARL, okay. Um, right, no longer ARL. Can we call that something else next year, maybe? <laughs> Uh, uniforms 250, miscellaneous supplies 120. Thank you. Continuing on to dispatchers, page 94 and page 12 in today's handout. Chief. Um, as in the 210 account, this number would have to be adjusted for the five percent of the, the numbers that you see in Mike's printout are significantly what we or come up with. And I think in, in all of the two twenty accounts, I'm not sure if you made an adjustment from my request or not, but we, it looks like they're pretty much the same. So I don't think there's anything that's been significantly increased other than other than the, other than the pay in that uh, that division. Yeah, 
Janet's asking me what the discrepancy is, why I have budgeted on the, the computer print on 110 290. Was there a, uh, is anyone getting step increases or have I made a mistake? No, there? I made a mistake. On, on, are you looking on my sheet or my, my booklet? On my booklet, I think I had, uh, it was based on 110,000. It should have been 106,000, what we based it from. Your, your printout is correct. Okay. The, the computer. Your, your computer printout is correct. Is 110, 290? Is, is what the computer printout says. I'm not seeing that over there. I'm seeing that. Maybe that's one you get here. That's one we got this morning. Yeah. 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 Based on 106, 862. That's what I had, is 106, 862 without adjusting for the increase. For the steps. Other oh, steps. There are step increases. That, and it does include step increases. This 106 does? Yes. Okay. I'm not. I'm not sure. We'll get it straightened out. I would. I would probably defer to the 110 number. Uh -huh. I'm sure it's something that you and I discussed, and you made an adjustment for that. So yeah. I just don't have. I don't have this printout. So we got to go back and check it out. Okay. If you would please. Do. Thank you. So wait a minute. Can I just ask a clarification please. for a second? Uh, for example, on page 094. Yes. Sir. Is uh, should the fiscal year should, should all of those should years, all be like 91, 92, 92, 93, and back to 93 again, is yeah. that how they should be? Yeah. 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 Everything yeah. should be advanced. Add, add Every, one. Okay. Add okay. one to each other. <clears throat> that helps. Okay. He said the manager will get us a, will verify that number. Yeah, we probably won't revisit it to the end of the budget process right. because it, with that other issue as well. Okay. No sense in changing it three times. Part time, 5,190. Overtime, which includes holiday and vacation and sick leave, will be 22,935. Social Security, 10,313. Main State Retirement, 7,878. Um, ICMA Retirement, 4,680. Disability plan, 748. Health insurance, 20,444. Workers' comp, 675. Miscellaneous supplies. What happened to telephone here? Yeah, excuse me, telephone, 6,825. 6, Miscellaneous supplies, 500. And uniforms, 2,500. You all done? I didn't look up, so I didn't. <laughs> if you had your hand up, I missed it. You missed it. Mr. Jordan. Back to part time. Yes, sir. You have in here is an eight buck an hour for your dispatcher there that fills in from 11 to 7 one day a week. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to have you take a hard look at that. You mentioned about difficult to fill that part time. A crossing guide get 14.50. And just to get somebody to come in there once a week, I think that should be looked at and brought up so it's a little better figured. For the benefit of the public, uh, Bill, you said the crossing guide's getting fourteen fifty. It's fourteen you per week. Yeah. Uh, not, okay. The numbers aren't comparable. Well, I don't I want anyone to think the crossing guide's somebody. getting fourteen fifty an hour because she's not. The crossing guard gets uh, five. Yeah. Those are hours a week. Those are hours That's a week. Right. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. So we're building. Well, I just like them to take a look at it. Okay, I, I want to make sure I Because I feel it's an important job. Okay. Are you saying you want to revisit that account at some no, point? No, no, okay. we can do it another year. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for Chief Pickering? Done a very good job. Thank you. Take care of the deer. Thank you very much for your time. Jane has a few deer down her place too. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard. A number of birds running around. I'm going to say about a three-minute stretching break because I'm going to get up and move around. If anybody else wants to, they're welcome to. And we will then get to the fire department. Come get moving. Okay. 
when you hear this, you think it should have been written also to the orchestra. But again, I, I was very um, scared to death to do mm -hmm. this. It took me a year to work on it. Yeah, I can believe that. Yes. I erased and rewrite and erase and rewrite almost like a composition. If I, w if I had to compose, it would be much, much uh, faster, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, this was uh, a labor of love and uh, I hope I didn't damage the piece. Now, I'm kind of curious about, we just sort of touched on the topic there, if you didn't write any new notes, but you did fill out chords. Yeah. Uh, I did it only when it is uh, neutral, when it is not changing anything. Mm -hmm. Like add in a note of a triad that wasn't yes, there or yes. something like that? No, that wasn't there, I didn't dare. Oh. I would put more, more basses, I would put uh, a pizzicato to help uh, in, in some... Uh, as some um, uh, notation to to be exaggerated or uh, but uh, um, as a matter of fact the compact disc is going to be at a commercial just next month and what we hear today is the only example from the first uh, print of the compact disc oh, we have the, and, um, the sample disc this hasn't even been been issued or yes, anything and, yet. Yes, and this is, uh, uh, I, I brought it here and when I heard your voice on the radio, I said, well, you are here, you are the one to <laughs> represent it to the world for the first time. Well, and I was so happy that uh, we can do it. I'm delighted to and honored, thank you. We're going, I think what might be a good idea is rather than, than just play it right straight through, yes. is to do a little uh, comparative sampling. I have, uh, today, as you know, on, on today's program, we've been sampling recent additions to the Pro Musical Library. This one is actually one that uh, uh, Jeff found in the, in the library that uh, we've had for since March of 1988 and it has never been played for some reason. It came in and uh, was put on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's with the Brandis Quartet of, of Berlin. Thomas Brandis and uh, Peter Brem playing violins, uh, Wilfried Strehle playing viola, and Wolfgang Bircher cello. The uh, quintet as, as written by Schubert for uh, two violins, viola, and two celli. Teldeck uh, CD. So that we, what we might do is sample a little of each of the movements of this and, uh, and a, a little of each of the movements of the orchestration. And then once we've uh, done that and maybe talked a little about each, then, then we'll play the whole uh, orchestrated version all the way through. You can look at hmm? about think in so many different ways. Uh, if you are looking on comparison to things, which I find that they're doing it always when they review records. They mo mainly compare mm -hmm. the records, then get into the point, I mean, into the music. And um, when it comes to comparison, it, it is like you compare a person with a person. All right, it is dispensed with. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda, which we are running behind on, is the fire department. And we do have somebody here. What is your title these days? Deputy Chief. He's deputy the acting chief. Oh. This is normally Deputy Chief Peter Gleason. Today he is acting chief Peter Gleason. I'll do my best. We'll see how well you act. I'll, I'll get your uh, time deficit. <laughs> Oh, we, we appreciate your good the budget deficit of time. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the council, this starts on page 100 in your big book, and it's probably page 14, 14, 14. on today's printout. Thank you. Okay, here. Just a couple of brief comments. Uh, 
across the board on almost all our accounts are either showing a reduction or, or a hold. The exception is the equipment account, which includes partial funding on the ladder truck. Uh, again, I just touched base on the excellent cost savings the department offers being a volunteer department. We understand the concerns of the council, and that's why we tried to hold the line and reduce all of our accounts with the exception of the ladder truck. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> those types of things, as many costs as we can control, we have. The payroll cost is a difficult one to estimate. The hydrant shoveling, those are both sort of volume-driven activities. We have a lot of fires, we have a lot of payroll, a lot of snow, a lot of shoveling. So those accounts stayed fairly high, but the others we try to reduce. Just quickly, yeah, I'm ready to go. I don't want to waste too much time. Okay. I uh, don't want to get into the lunch hour. <laughs> I promised Bob I'll get him so we can get done before the lunch. That's when we leave anyway. <laughs> right. Um, again, I think we need some, a few minutes in a general discussion of the fire department and what kind, what level of expectations we have with this. One of the <coughs> issues to be decided is the staffing of the fire police. The fire fire chief position. Um, it is budgeted right now to be a full-time position, um, which would not start as full-time before July 1, 92. I think that is a, the, one of the primary issues. We have a, an equipment issue with the fire department also. Do you want to address that? I could speak to that. I would like to revisit that later in the budget process. I okay. don't want a decision at this point. But the process I've been doing thus far I seem to be leaning in the direction of maintaining a full-time chief. I've begun to state that to some of the volunteers, and I thought the council ought to be aware of it uh, for reasons particularly of training and of liability and, uh, and of availability and responsiveness and uh, just, you know, what I see as the longer-term direction of uh, the department. I, uh, that's where I stand at this point. I, I've still got a lot more thinking to do on it, a lot more research. But I'm, I'm beginning to uh, to move in that direction, and I have spoken to some of the volunteers about it, and plan to continue to do that with them. And uh, hopefully, we can revisit this uh, in detail uh, before the budget is done. But I did want you to know, in case you heard elsewhere, that I, I had said to so and so, such and such, that uh, uh, that in fact I may have actually have said that. So, does the department have a position on filling? I can give you my position, I, which is a recommendation that we fill the position, I think. As a full-time? As a full-time position. Mike and I talked extensively about it yesterday. Uh, concerned about the levels of training that, and the level of knowledge that's required now, we have to know, we have to be in compliance with the NFPA standards, OSHA standards, SARA title, which deals with hazardous materials, our inspection, the BOCA code. That requires a lot of knowledge and a lot of time, and I think to demand that of a person while holding another job would be difficult. Also, we'd like to proceed in new directions of training and records keeping, which is another time consuming area. And I think just to expect that of a part time position would be difficult. And I think the quality and level of service we were expecting would be difficult to do on a part time basis. My, that's my own opinion. You'll get a full report on it before you have to adopt a budget so that we can. Considered a budget decision as well as a, as well as a policy decision. As you know, say along that same lines, if the report could contain recommendations as far as full time, uh, is that a nine to five? Is that a staggered shift? That'll all be there. Okay. And so I want to know as much documentation as possible. I think you know one thing. If we if it is eventually full time, we need a very very clear understanding by everyone of what the responsibilities are. I think you know uh, Chief Webster was very dedicated, and you know, as we look at some of the issues he ran into over the last few years, it was because everyone had different expectations, and uh, you know I think uh, he worked through those well. But uh, you know it, it was an issue throughout you know the whole tenure of the first full-time fire chief. And I uh, I think we need to do a better job in defining that up front so that everyone understands uh, what the responsibilities are of the chief, be it full-time or part-time. Okay, so we will have a continuation of this specific item discussion, not today, but sometime later before we finalize the budget. Okay. Um, 
outlays at the end of this, so I think we can probably flip pages and then get to the, sure. the outlay situation. Anybody have any objections? Right now, the full-time payroll is being requested at thirty-one thousand to ten or two twenty. Part-time payroll twenty-four thousand seven hundred. Carl, just a quick question. Uh, do you have an account of how many volunteers there are total, just for public information? So that Rough count, I can give you, <laughs> it's about, of the paid positions, which is the two fire companies, is approximately 60. The rescue is totally non-paid, and there's an additional, I believe, almost 30 members on that. Thank you. And just on the, on the rescue issue, too, they're the only, I believe, the only one in the area that still does not charge for transport. Okay. Well, that's something that I think we're going to, that'll come up later on. It's rescue list, etc. Somewhere under account. I believe it's just listed separately as far as vehicle maintenance is all. Okay. Listed. Okay. We'll at the end. Yes. Right. Hydrant snow removal payroll, twelve hundred dollars. Then moving along to dues and memberships, nine hundred dollars. <coughs> Training, five thousand eighty. Conferences and meetings, seventeen thousand. Yeah, that uh, 1700. 1700. Whoop, thank you. Well, That's, an That's an error. That's an error. That's an error. That should be 500. I was wondering where we were all thank going. You. I wanted to go. <laughs> it's a long 17,000. <laughs> we're going on a nice trip. Is your total so right? That's a $1,200 savings. Okay. Yeah, it was 500 in the book. Yeah, it's 500, 500 in the book. Right. Yeah. So, so we yeah. So we picked up 1200 just on a clerical error. Is that honestly picking up 1200? Yeah. yeah, that was. Yeah, okay. the manager, when I inputted all these into the computer. Yeah, there's 1,200 this morning. Make some more like that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fun way to find money. Yes, that's encourage that kind of error in that kind of direction. Okay, vehicle maintenance, 7,500. Radio alarm maintenance, 4,500. Equipment maintenance, 2,000. Gasoline, which will be reduced, but right now we're showing at 2,430. Uniforms, 4,900. Everybody has bunker pants now? Yes. Good. I can see Turn off. Again, history. Minor equipment and tools, 5,000. 5, Are there any pagers that need to be replaced this year? That's something. No, we're not going to replace any pagers. Uh, one of Jimmy's most successful projects so far is the return of the. Uh, elusive missing pages. We have an adequate number on hand. We don't want to replace any this year. Terrific. Good news. Thank you. Miscellaneous supplies, 4,625. Fire prevention. Wait, back on miscellaneous supplies. This is the fire department share of the new photocopy that's already been purchased, 1375. So that can be reduced. This has already been purchased. Reduced by what, 2,000? 1375. No, 1375. Oh, 1375. Okay. That's 1375. Oh. Okay. All right, next is fire prevention supplies. Does this include the fire prevention day at the schools? Yes, that's where most of the LA is, is okay. the uh, helmets, calling books, that type of thing. We have a surplus from last year, so we reduced it this year. Thank you. And outlay, 79,051. Proposed to include air packs, hose replacement, hepatitis shots, and potentially one out of a three-year payment on financing a new ladder truck. Yeah, what I uh, hope to do with the ladder truck is to take it's about 74000 out of this budget uh, to fund <coughs> Any surplus we generate over 130,000 this year, which I think we will generate some, would go toward the ladder truck, and then the balance would be paid as part of that school department three-year note, which included the same note. So I'm hoping it would have three payments of the note of about the amount that's in this budget, of about 75,000, and the balance uh, would be paid for through the the hopefully generated excess surplus. If we don't generate excess, that excess surplus, 
uh, you know, we would try to do it through the last two years of the, of the note structure so that we paid it back in, in equal over the two. But it would enable us to uh, replace the ladder truck uh, with essentially the same impact on the budget the next two years as this impact. It would also, the surplus would be increasing 20% under that proposal above the low amount that it is, although it would still be some 40% below where I'd like it to be, I think, you know, in recognition of, you know, the need, the emergency need for this piece of equipment, you know, that's what surplus is for. And uh, I, uh, the, the entire ladder truck budget is 325, which includes the truck, includes gear, uh, to uh, a few wads of to go on the truck, although they're going to reuse an awful lot. Plus uh, some modifications to the the front of the garage. They got to take some bricks out with the door and put the new panel on the door. We need to gain about a foot. Yeah, I got to gain about a foot to get the ladder in. There. And they've been meeting with uh, Peter's chair, the ladder truck committee, Gilly Jordan, Bertado, and some of the captains, Bob, Nally, and others. And they've been meeting with vendors and gotten new specs. Yeah, we're we're ready to do the specs this time. So are you saying, Mike, that seventy-four thousand would be removed from this account? No. Can go to the no, no. No, I'm saying it would be similar to what I was proposing with the school department the other night. Is it'd be a three-year no, but this, this is would the be beginning. this would be the first payment of it. Okay. This is a policy commitment to a new ladder truck, which I think we need to talk about <clears throat> sometime along the way. Do we want to have that discussion now? I think we need figures. What do you need for figures? Well, you were saying originally it was 325, but you didn't seem to think that the truck and the modifications were going to cost that much in a conversation we had last week. I think, you know, from everything I've heard, we're, we're looking at about 315. Uh, yeah, I've got 10 in there for, you know, the purchase that size wiggle room, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, I just think, you know, when you're up in that stratosphere of amounts, uh, you know, as recent projects have shown, uh, you, you need a little space for the things you don't anticipate, or for the, the pieces you want to put on this truck that you then discover don't fit, uh, those types of issues. I think when you're making an investment of something that's going to be here for 25 years, uh, that we, uh, 30 years, that we ought to make sure uh, we do it right the first time. Did that, did that answer your question? Or is it? I just wanted you to say it on camera. Okay. Thanks. Are there other <laughs> figures you're hoping for besides that information? <clears throat> well, you were saying that you were about you were about to make a decision as to which truck you were going to buy. No, we're, we're ready to put to uh, okay. assemble the specs to send out to the vendors. Okay. We had, Mike wished us to uh, wait until the money had been approved before we we actually sent the specs out for bids. Carl. I just, well, I, I want to, I'd like to see, I, I feel as though I've been kept somewhat in the blind, but I'd like to see what figures the committee that's been researching this has come up with as far as potential options, dollar amounts, purchase options, uh, potential for lease options. I just want to see facts and figures. I mean, I, it, it feels as though this is going forth, specifications are going to be sent out. We want the money approved, and we don't even know what we're approving anything for. I mean, I haven't heard any reports. I know that they've been looking into it, but I haven't seen anything. They've, they've looked at trucks, you know, ranging from real low grade, what, 250000 maybe, up to upwards of $400,000. Uh, you know, all that information is available. What I, what I don't want to do is get so specific with the, with the specs that it looks like we can only purchase one particular vendor's truck. Uh, and you know that's something that we're going to be looking at very carefully in the specs. We're we're looking for you know a good heavy duty truck. Uh, so can't we're not looking for a whole lot of customizing because that's where you run into the expense. Uh, we'll, we've looked at we've taken the vendor's standard chassis, standard body compartments, and standard options as opposed to customizing it to fit individual needs, which is where you run into your price differences. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on what vendor you're discussing with what they build out of, whether it's galvano or regular steel or aluminum, the, pr the different options you have there. There's no firm price for any truck yet right now. Okay. We d we've just discussed what we'd like to see on the truck, <coughs> and they will give you a rough price of where that's going to put those options, what price range that puts you in. Mm -hmm. There isn't really a report that's, that's been prepared, Carl. They've, they've just been meeting with a lot of vendors. <coughs> you know, 
to be to be honest with you, I went to one of their meetings and you know it was all over the place as to what they could get, and I said, you know, this is the budget you ought to be planning on living with. You know, four hundred thousand is out of the out of the question, and you know, we we don't need to buy a piece of junk that that isn't going to last. That you know, on the very low end, that we ought to look at this as a long term investment. Uh, the build up of the three twenty five was, I think, it was. Two ninety nine for one of the trucks that seemed to fit that middle middle level, uh, and then uh, Gilly had gotten gone out and gotten some estimates for the modifications of the garage, and then there were a few other costs that uh, within the system. You know, one of the things in the specs, uh, you know, do, do you budget? You know, some expense people go look at the truck when it's being manufactured. You know, there, there's some issues like that, but uh, you know, if you want. Uh, we can give you that build up and let's just let you know some of the options. But that's one of the, the issues with you know, we're, we're relying on volunteers and they're doing a great job. But uh, I haven't tried to get a lot, whole lot of written material. Out of it. What we've done with the vendors is as, as they came in, we've told them what we would really like to have, mm -hmm. and they've given us prices. And then we've deleted items to get it to what we can afford. And there's no written report on that process. We all have notes as we've taken discussing them, but mm -hmm. we have no written report of that. I, it just you know some some kind of tracking of, of what's been done. I mean, this, to to appreciate the work that's been done because it's greatly appreciated. Uh, but to you know look at a, a big picture, which we're trying to present, we're trying to set policy and direction. But to find out the major expenditure and what the life is of it uh, versus other options. Uh, what is the? Is, it's a three-year payback we're talking about here, uh, and what is the whole cost of that over the life of the truck? Versus, you know, and then 20 years from now, when it comes time to replace that, what might the expected cost be? To just see how the money's spent, to just track it, and to see what other options may be available, if any. I, my sense was, you know, we looked at a lot of those options in the earlier report that was presented to the council as to, you know, use trucks and some of those type things. Carl, help me understand, are you talking about equipment options or financing options or both? Finance. I mean, I'm, I'm allowing the. Just so we settled that. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm allowing the equipment up to the, the expertise of those who are going to utilize it. You know, we could finance this over a longer period of time and save money up front. Uh, the reason I I didn't propose that is because, for one thing, I'm not a believer in a whole lot of debt. Uh, and secondly, you know, we've got if it isn't a, a ladder truck this year, we've got a pumper coming up. We've got trucks. Uh, you know, I think it, it's a lot better if we can have a regular capital improvement schedule and as a matter of policy try to replace so much each year rather than doing everything on, on notes and, and bonds where you end up not only paying the capital expense but also so much interest. The other side of the argument is, is that the ladder truck's going to be here for 20 more years and you know the people I'll be paying for it in year 15 as well as in years 1, 2, and 3. Uh, but that's a philosophical you know, discussion. Uh, Policy issue, and you know, we have tried to avoid debt whenever we can. Do we need? I think we all understand that if we finance it over a longer period of time, we're looking at a smaller outlay every year, but over a longer period, over more years. I don't know if we need figures to make a decision about which way to finance it. I, I could give you figures on longer financing. I could give you figures on not using any surplus monies. I could do anything you want. I'd like to also see what uh, percentage of our total budget is consumed by debt payment and whether that's, I think it's very healthy, but I'd like to see what it is compared to what's recommended. Right now it's extremely low, but you know the, the real issue is with the, the school project coming up. Mm -hmm. Do we want figures that would give us information about financing over longer than three years? You know, I'm wondering if we can make that kind of policy decision right now without those figures, or if the majority of people want that kind of information. Well, I, I think that one of the things you're, you look at when you're thinking about financing over time and, and the debt's good is, do you spend 70000 for a capital improvement in one year and offset that against Extending that for ten years and putting that extra forty or fifty thousand dollars into another account where it could best be used. Uh, do you do you put in a nice truck over three years, pay for it, and then you have the truck, the road that it's going to ride on, fall apart? That seems to be uh, pennywise and pound foolish. 
Yeah. The, the other thing to be, that I was looking at too and discussed with Peter yesterday, and I agree with you, Kyle, on those points, is uh, the, the fact that we have another pumper that was due to re be replaced last year under the normal equipment replacement schedule. I said to Peter yesterday that you know what I'd like to do is try to hold on to that truck as is until we've got this ladder truck paid for, so that this next three years would pay for the ladder truck, and then the next maybe two years after that, or three years, we'd, we would try to pick up the cost of, and replace the pumper at this at that time, so that we're not paying for two trucks at once. Of course, the, the other thing is you could buy both of them and put them out over 20 years or 15 years. Oh, I could just say so. It all depends on whether or not you want to pay for equipment. You know, that's a real policy issue, whether or not you want to try to pay for it up front or whether or not you, you want to, uh, I'll show a little of my bias here, get into the 80s debt mentality. And uh, it, uh, I think, you know, we ought to try to avoid debt and try to pay as we, we go as much as possible. Just the municipal law, I think we had a discussion one time where the accountants mentioned about uh, fixed assets. Uh, yeah. Does the municipality have any benefit in depreciation over the year versus the cost of? Yeah, we don't pay taxes, so we don't. You know, because once again, I look at, you know, if we're replacing two trucks, if you put a set amount each year for that purpose, then it's there instead of every 10 years you get hit with a bond issue that's going to stretch out for three to five or seven years. A lot of other communities have what they call a capital reserve fund or capital project fund. And you know, the, rather than go through every line item and having an outlay in each account, you would decide that you're going to spend $400,000 a year, or whatever the amount is, for capital outlay. We would give you a list of projects and a list of recommendations, and you would choose from among that group on a preset determined amount. You, you, instead, you've, you've done the five-year capital improvement plan type schedule. You know, that we've always done with the outlay in the individual departments. You know, I think there is some merit in doing the other way, of just you know, doing doing the record of general fixed assets. What is your total inventory? Uh, what is uh, you know, what's the, the useful life of it? What is the amount you should be setting aside each year, budgeting that amount, and then you know, moving projects back and forth, depending on you know, will the copier last? Will the fire truck last? And all those things. I think there are benefits both ways. Phyllis, you were, I see your hand, Bill. Phyllis, before. No, just testing. Okay. <laughs> Thank Bill. you. Bill? Phil, I'd like to move this along. I, I, we can sit here uh, yeah. for another hour and discuss what we're going to do, what you want from us, whether you want them to go ahead and get the specs and what have you, and whether we're going to purchase a truck or do you want to have another discussion and decide that at a later date when you find out how you're going to pay for it. What do you want from us right now, or me? I don't know what the concern I'm hearing is with the financing rather than with, with the fact that we're going to be purchasing a ladder truck. Is that everybody's concern, the financing, as opposed to whether or not we're going to get a truck anyway? I don't think there's a doubt for me. I, I mean, I think the truck's going to be there. So you're, you're for have, a truck. Your I question no is financing. I have a truck. Okay. Does anybody have a concern with the fact whether or not we will be getting a new fire, a ladder truck? That we will or will not? that we will. I'm saying we will be getting a new ladder truck. Does anybody have a concern with that statement? No, I don't have no concern with it, as long as I see how it's going to be paid for and what it's going okay, to affect. We'll get to the, the financing, and I want to separate the two. I want to separate the fact that there will be a new ladder <coughs> truck from the financing of it. Well, I, I think the two go together. Is how you're going to pay for it. That's right. And when but I, but we can't how you're going to pay for it makes a decision whether you purchase it or not. It does to we me. can't get into a catch-22. That's right. And and I think it's hard, good. Janet, to just say that, yes, we're going to have a fire truck, even though I believe we are, if you haven't told me how you're going to pay for it first. Okay. okay. It is. It and is. I sometimes say, you know, I don't even want to, if we're not going to get one, we don't have to talk about it, too. That's right. So. What, what do you think of the, the proposal I put forth to take about 75 out of the budget to pay for it over the next two years, plus to take the balance, the next two years as well, plus to take the balance? out of the surplus. <coughs> Bills? I just feel we've, we've spent surplus in lots of different ways. And your projection, um, we're not sure that we really will end up with that amount of surplus. No, we're not. So you were counting on about 115000 Yeah, and uh, a couple of counselors Roughly. said I added up my numbers wrong, too. Your number is wrong. It should be yeah. uh, undesignated fund balance mm -hmm. of 907 instead of 927. 
Um, that's what makes me uncomfortable, because all of a sudden we always have the surplus that we can balance off payments to something else. But in this, these times, we're not sure. We can't count on it like we did before. I know you're conservative in your estimates. You're mm -hmm. careful. I, I, so we may be talking about financing a, a greater amount of money. Could be a little bit more, yeah. Jane? I, I'd like to see us explore a little bit the possibility of financing it more over through debt service because I'm uh, concerned with a new school construction project coming up uh, that uh, the state kicks in more money the higher the debt service is in the home community. So in other words, if we have a real low uh, debt, uh, they will expect us to pay a larger portion of the school construction project before state money kicks in. Even municipal side debt? Yeah, the community's ability to pay. So uh, we ought to at least look at that. Mm -hmm. So, so what you're saying, if we're in debt up to our neck, yeah. we get better <laughs> results out of the state? That's right. Oh, they're still there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Phil. Um, does that explain a lot? Maybe we don't want to take advantage of that. I think we ought to at least look at it. Janet, just, a, just an idea for thinking, and I don't think we're going to decide it today, but the way I feel right now is that we do have the fire truck, and we don't put any money in the budget for it as of right now. And uh, then we wait and see what the surplus is going to be because we're not going to buy this truck between now and the end of June and use that amount of the surplus that we can for the down payment and then see what we've got to have for the balance. I mean, I think we're going about it just backwards because I don't like this 75, uh, 74,000, uh, which makes a large budget figure right now in my thinking. I had rather say, yes, we're going to have the fire truck, so you and your crew are okay deputy, you know what I mean? You're going to have it. You don't care about the financing. All you want to do is know you're going to have a truck. And then let us worry about it when Mike has told us exactly what the surplus is. If the surplus comes in at 265 and he wants to add 130 onto the undesignated fund, good. We've got 135 to work with. That means we've only got to find for that another 190. Wonderful. We're back in, uh, in ballpark that I can see and that I can figure. But I think you should wait till we find out what the surplus yeah. is. I won't know what the surplus is until September. Well, that's all right. It's quite a ways off. You're not going to pay for any trucks before that because they can't build them that fast. No. So but we if we're going to start financing mm -hmm. in, yes. this, in mm -hmm. the fiscal 93 budget, we need to make that decision by the end of May. That's well, I think we could. Yeah. He's not going to know the surplus, though. No, but he got a good finger on it if I have to go up and help him. You think? <laughs> well, what I don't know is I think we should one major them factor them. in what the taxes, the, the, the amount of unpaid taxes yeah. is going to be yeah. as of 60 days after the close of the fiscal year. That's the key date, and that's September 1st. And you just don't know until then. I'm wondering if he can give us, if it's worth waiting till mid-May, if you can give us a better handle on it in mid-May than you can now, because that the budget has to be done by the end of May. Yeah, it might be bad if my number's better in mid-May than I did last week. Yeah. But couldn't we just, <laughs> couldn't we allocate the funding today, you know, with some sort of asterisk that would be conditional upon whatever the final decision on financing would be? Could, couldn't we at least allocate for the moment the money rather than drag this out for another hour? What? Just uh, the financing schemes, if it was out of over a 10-year period or five-year or whatever, what type of payments would be required for the first payment? Well, for 10 years, years, we're looking at three and a quarter. You'd probably add about another uh, 120 to that. So you're looking at four, you're looking at roughly 450. Over 10 years, would be $45,000 a year. You'd end up, you know, paying about an extra hundred thousand dollars over the life of over a ten year. I mean, I think, but I think there are, you know, Phyllis has mentioned the Thomas Jordan Trust. I mean, if we end up having to buy that thing, we can we can make our debt look great in terms of uh, getting more money from the state for school projects. But I mean, it's all going to be with the timing. Uh, I think we have to be extremely careful not to be putting out initial payments on debt into future years. Because I think we've got, number one, we ought to live within the means of the town and of the, of the taxpayers. And second, uh, you know, we keep mentioning that school project. And, you know, I think we've got to begin to get things done on the municipal side before we start having to pay for that school project. Because once the school project comes along, I can just see the seven councilors and the manager sitting here at that point saying, uh, you know, we've got to pick up all this debt service. Everything else has got to be flat or reduced. And 
we're going to be in for a real tough time two years from now, and that's another reason why I've been so uh, strident in my support of this budget because uh, you know the money's even if the economy improves two years from now, you, you got that big school project facing you, and I've seen what happens in the past, and you know that's a very important need, and something needs to happen over there. So. I still feel a lot better, Michael, to take $130,000, as you've suggested, out of surplus and earmark that right to any time that you'd like, tomorrow or last night, and leave the rest of it until after we close the year. But I think we may get more out of surplus. I think $130,000 down on $315,000 or $325,000 fire truck is good. I wouldn't hesitate to take the $190,000 and put it over three years after that. Beginning in fiscal year 94, then? Talking about the three-year note beginning, beginning fiscal year '94. Yeah. But well, you, you, were, I'm not sure I follow that. Or if you said take 130, Mike's proposal, as I understand, is once we get 130 towards surplus, then take anything over that, mm -hmm. not take 130. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, but that's uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We will okay. up to 265. That's all right. Go ahead. He's saying eliminate the 74. Mm -hmm. That's just what I feel. I, mean, I, I want to do it, but I want to do it the best way, and I figure it should be done over a longer term rather than all out of this year's budget. If we don't start financing it until fiscal year '94, when does that? What does? How does that affect the schedule of obtaining the equipment? That doesn't affect that at all. Okay. And you just make a commitment. What it does do is put you seventy thousand dollars or whatever the amount is. If it's three years, or forty-five thousand. If it's ten years, that you need to find in next year's budget. I would just like to say, and I would say it again, and I'd like to move on. Mm -hmm. Let's go around the table and find out if everybody's in favor of going for the truck. Then we can argue this financing at a later day. Okay. When we get the final results of your budget. I, 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 I think we're wasting time. We already did that. We already did it. It's unanimous. We're going to get the truck. It's unanimous. We're wasting time. The question is, do we delete $74,000 from this account? We're going to review this whole budget, and this is one of the items okay, so we'll just that you're going to re-look at. This is going to be your revisit. But why, don't, but why don't we at least get the sentiment of the group, So, because we don't even know what the sentiment is okay. before we revisit it. Let's at least get a sentiment so we know where we were today. Do you want to outline the options? As you understand, I, there's one option. Do we want to allocate the 79051 today or not? And then we're going to revisit the issue. No. 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 Oh, you mean the set? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go? Okay. The question becomes. As it stands. You want to as go it with stands. The proposal that's before you right now. Bill right. says no. Jane says no. Irv no. says no. I say yes. No. Carl says no. Yes. 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 Phil. Yes. Okay. So it's three to four. We'll revisit it and we're not going to necessarily buy into this so scheme. That's not a cut, that's a revisit item, or yes. is it a cut? It's a revisit. That is a revisit, it is not a cut. Okay. Okay. But it doesn't do anything to your schedule, I think that's... That's yeah. fine. You've got to... Your heart can... I'll leave it all the other <laughs> Page 194. Mm -hmm. 194. Page 194. Okay. Which is... Public safety building. We get through this very, very quickly. Uh, is, is indicated that those new rates the PUC came up with several months ago that the business customers are rebelling against <coughs> one of those business customers. And this is the building that hit the hardest, and uh, that's why the power cost is up from three thousand to six thousand. Uh, really got nailed. Water and sewers up for the reasons we know. Building maintenance. Is <coughs> virtually unchanged. Power, water, and sewer the same, and I could follow through making all the same comments for the Engine 1 station as well. Okay, so we're looking both at public safety building and Engine 1 station. With the total for Engine 1 public safety building being... That's up $3,200, $3,000 for power and 200 for water and sewer. And that's at a total of 14,700. Engine one is at 4,500. Is there any line items here people want to discuss? Michael, you've been uh, really, really pessimistically conservative about losing the, uh, the rate case in the context of the budget that you have presented us. In the best light, if we won, 
what would be the savings in terms of the overall budget? Don't know because it all depends on what they do with hydrant rates. But uh, we will know on April 28th. You you would, you do to adopt the budget on May 11th. So if there are any savings between April 28th and May 11th, uh, you can you can uh, deal with them at the when you vote on the budget on May 11th. And there's no way that they can postpone the decision beyond that date. Okay, thank you. They may be a few days, but statutorily they have to do it within nine months of the date of filing. Okay. That's the that's the end of the nine months. <coughs> Is the same decision by the PUC on CMP going to be that same date? That's a separate statement. So we don't know when they're going to make their. No, and I and I have not given any time to that issue because. Uh, what does that mean? Bill. On the public safety bill, we estimate forty-five hundred as far as poor goes, and we're requesting six thousand for yeah. next year. And we had three last year, so according to the way your bills have come in lately, after the increase, you will, you've gone up fifteen hundred dollars for another year. Yeah. Does that mean because that's a full year? Or? That's that's exactly right. Okay. Seems like a quite a jump, and maybe we can do something. <coughs> on that same note. Has there been a uh, energy survey done in that building? There was one done, but it's probably about five or six years ago. Okay. Just as does CMP yeah. still offer that, or is it strictly private entities? They'll do the uh, CMP will do some things. I don't think they'll do a full lot. Okay. And do some. Of I think the thing with that building, you have to remember, it is occupied twenty-four hours a day. Mm -hmm. It's you know, like you look at the power for this building versus that one. Uh, it makes a difference when you're there. I just I'm running on full operation. Wondering about lighting and alternatives and whatnot. You know. We looked at that some. I, know, I think the, the exterior lights there, perhaps some of them could be converted. We also changed the charging systems on the trucks so they don't charge constantly, they only charge a couple hours a day. Yeah. Do they charge during peak and non peak? Non peak. You know, non -peak. Okay. Try to do it at night. Mm -hmm. The charges only come on, I think, two hours a night. Thank you. Any other questions on those two buildings? Yeah, we'll get back to it. Um, another item <coughs> supposed to be hearing is uh, 240 miscellaneous public protection. I'm going to recommend that we deal with that at a later time so we don't hold up department heads' discussions. Present here and we're tardy with him. Okay. Anything else for acting chief Glacy? Nice job, Peter. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Peter. And that brings us to Public Works. We have Bob Nally, the Director of Public Works, with us. Thank you for your patience with us. There's two members of the Fort Williams Committee. I just want to say the same thing. It seems like that would be a quick one, and they wouldn't have said to him, you get done with Public Works by 12 to do a do parks. Do parks. I'm sorry. Okay. Six points. They can join. I don't want to up here. Oh, no you want to see how you do that with the cheers? <laughs> the account they are really here for is 640 <laughs> If everyone doesn't remember, this is Jeff Van Fleet, uh, member of the Good Fort morning. Advisory Commission, and Randall Wild, the chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Robert Malley, the director of public works. It's <laughs> all my counsel, my name is Paul. What's my line? The company I'm probably most concerned with is 640 Do you want to start at the beginning of Parks? But yes, I do. Uh, that's on 199. Which 199? No, sorry. 198. Eight. And in the handout, it's on page 30 on the computer printout from this morning. So I think we can have Mr. Malley give us a review of the parks, and then we'll get into Fort Williams Park specifically. Uh, the parks are now pretty straightforward from last year. We're trying to maintain, uh, as far as services and programs, the same thing that we've had in the past. Uh, we're maintaining our part-time uh, payroll at basically the same level, uh, overtime's the same, uh, related expenses, telephone power, we're trying to be kept the same. 
there's no capital outlay plan other than an outlay in 4003, so our equipment uh, we feel is adequate. We're not requesting any mowers or related grounds equipment for purchase. Uh, we're anticipating uh, an expenditure for our grounds maintenance materials, which is seeding and fertilizer and maintenance on our athletic fields. We'd like to continue to maintain them at the same level that we're doing right now. Feeling very comfortable that we're finally reaching a point with our athletic fields that they are top notch and it's because of our maintenance programs in the past through fertilization and, the, and seeding that they've got to that point. So we'd like to continue the fine work and, and continue in that area. But uh, there are no surprises in the parks budget, let's put it that way. It's always appreciated. As someone who spends as much time as anybody else in this council on some of the athletic fields, I have always appreciated <coughs> the quality of the fields that we have. You know why I want a little more grass, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Fort Williams committee concerns. Uh, well, I think as I understand it now, the budget set aside for Fort Williams is at 30000 which is a substantial reduction. Uh, the committee has discussed it, and of course, I think in the circumstances the state of the town is in, that we, we don't, uh, we'd like to have more, obviously, but recognizing that uh, this is not the time for it. The 30000 however, we would like to uh, uh, explain and uh, urge your approval of, uh, because we feel it is part of an essential ongoing effort at the park. And I'll try to split it into uh, three categories. Uh, probably defer when we get into more detail that I'm able to address uh, to Bob or even to Mike. Uh, first, uh, the first third roughly, and I'm, I'm speaking rough numbers if, if you'll bear with me on that, uh, would be addressed to ongoing maintenance effort at the park. Uh, and that would include this year, as I understand it, a, uh, the installation of some toilets at the Public Works building, which have not existed previously, much to our surprise, the Commission's surprise. Um, and we think that uh, certainly the allocation is uh, well worth it for the benefit of the employees of Public Works. Uh, the the, the 10000 we feel, certainly is a, very, is, is, is a bare minimum in that respect, not only for toilets, but the maintenance at the park. We could certainly, I'm sure, sink substantial sums just in tree trimming and not really see dramatic results because there is so much uh, there at the fort. The second category I would uh, address has to do um, with ongoing efforts by the National Guard to improve in particular parking facilities uh, at the fort, in particular the parade ground, and there is, uh, uh, as I understand it, a uh, expectation that the Guard will commence uh, work on a larger parking lot that is at the, uh, between the T intersection that <coughs> go left to the lighthouse and right toward public maintenance. There is an area, and I have the master plan <coughs> here that I can be specific uh, with, but there's a large park that is planned to accommodate the, uh, I'll point it out, I don't know if this makes a lot of sense to anybody here unless they've seen it, but there's a large parking lot that has been planned to be built. Uh, initially we spoke of doing it in phases, the National Guard says that with the, the, uh, the structure of the parking lot and there is some detail that's required to accommodate drainage and the base uh, uh, a base for the lot itself before you get to the paving section. Their feeling is that you really can't do it effectively in phases. They would like to design it and implement that all at once. The town's responsibility with respect to these parking facilities is for materials only. We have uh, uh, engaged the interest of the Guard because it's helpful to their ongoing training mission to provide equipment and personnel to, uh, in effect, give us something that's of great benefit. Uh, especially in light of uh, what we see as continuing pressure. I'm not sure if the, if the town council has uh, gone over this in detail, but there has been a report from uh, the Portland Area Comprehensive Transportation Committee that shows once again that the Ford is the subject of uh, very heavy use, not only in the summer, but even in the November months where it's that uh, transitional season where people come down use the park, park if for nothing else, to drive all the way into the lighthouse to see what the ocean is doing, or to stop and uh, uh, use the, the, the facilities, or, or uh, uh, by that I mean the swings and the, the shelters <laughs> and that sort of thing. Uh, 
so there is a continuing pressure on the park in that respect and the parking spaces especially in the summer on the weekends where there is a tremendous uh, influx of traffic where people want to get out and enjoy the weather calls for uh, an effort to uh, upgrade the parking areas the final item that uh, I would like to impress uh, the town council with has to do with the Commission's concerns with what I broadly categorize as, as safety issues which also ties into the National Guard. Uh, one of the things the Commission uh, was very interested in uh, when developing the master plan uh, was a specific area uh, near Ships Cove where if the Commission is familiar with the narrow road that goes up toward the lighthouse and there's a stone wall on the left as you go toward the lighthouse. And especially in the summer, you will see children, uh, women with uh, uh, people, babies in, in carriages, and just anybody walking along the wall so they can see the view, as opposed to the sidewalk along the street. And it's an understandable reaction. Um, part of the master plan uh, is that uh, we try to avoid that problem, is to try to see if we cannot construct a boardwalk on the opposite, on the seaward side of the wall that puts pedestrians away from traffic. It gives them a low barrier from the traffic and gives them an opportunity to enjoy the walk and see what the view is like. Uh, this was a, a something the Commission, as I said, was very interested in seeing how far we could get with it. We have uh, learned that the National Guard, although initially skeptical, now is taking increased interest because although their mission uh, initially has been can we train on their horizontal construction for roads, road building? Uh, they also are required to be, obtain training with uh, uh, expedient bridges. And this kind of work is very comparable to what they would be expected to know. So they've taken on an interest in seeing what they can do. And we're now discussing, I think, with them um, the design of this structure. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge, an engineering challenge, because of the of the lay of the land. There's a, quite a bit of a ledge there, and they have to sort out how they can construct it. But that is an issue. If we can pursue that with the Guard, again, we would be responsible, responsible for materials. If we can pursue that with the Guard, we would very much like to have the opportunity uh, to have that kind of structure built at the fort in that particular area. Um, and I, I highlight that as, as one of our prime concerns. Um, and I don't want and I don't want to talk about any number of others that we have, but the, certainly the parking areas and the allocation of funds, I think, certainly justify that additional, say, $20,000 that we uh, would request the council approve in addition to what we roughly calculate would be a $10,000 requirement for the park maintenance and upkeep and the installation of the toilets. So you're saying 30000 So I'm saying 30000 <laughs> I don't want to uh, 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 misstate that in any way. But that's the uh, feelings regarding uh, that particular budget amount by the Commission and why we would ask the Town Council to approve it as it is now uh, written. Okay. I'll just start the discussion by saying my understanding from the news articles is that this is not one of the Guard units to be cut at the Federal Okay. It was somebody. Not at this point. Okay. Not correct. at this point. I don't know how much, well, for the time being, I'll put a little bit of faith in that anyway. Now, last year we had National Guard working at the fort, and I'm not sure they got done as much as I expected to see. The that an act, did anybody else have well, I, that problem? <laughs> I think everyone um, had to adjust expectations, and the reasoning behind it is that the, we would obviously, if we were paying a contractor, expect someone to come in there and be under commitments for completion. The guard, although they are happy, want to do the work, have a different setup in that they get people who uh, come in on the weekend. Mm -hmm for a commitment that uh, will, you know, once they get to their unit, then they get the equipment out, and by the time they get down to the Ford, it's another two hours, and then they get the equipment checked out, and then they get working. And uh, the idea for the guard is that this is training, and so we don't always get these highly skilled uh, equipment operators for the parking lots, for example. So things perhaps go more slowly than we would normally expect, but on the other hand, uh, we are, they are getting a benefit, and we ultimately are getting the same benefit, or an additional benefit by what the work is that they're completing. And Bob has, has certainly been checking to see that the work that is finally accomplished uh, is acceptable to the town. I'm wondering if it's ever likely that we could get them for a half week or a full week commitment. I know they have that kind of commitment because I know that they can build a runway. It takes them more than a weekend, and they've done that in their summer 
I don't know if there's summer camp situation or what, but I know that that, I don't know if that particular unit um, is similar unit does We've we certainly requested that. Um, what they do each year is have a two-week training session where they try to go to re a remote location so that they can set up a, a, um, uh, a camp. They try to simulate uh, field conditions. And I have not been made aware that this has been uh, suggested as this ideal site for that kind of training mission. They would, I think, prefer to get in an area where not only do they have to train, but they can say, okay, you've got to set up a site that you are going to live in for two weeks in the field. And that's, uh, the, I mean, that's an initial part of the mission. And I'm not, I don't expect that they would think that this devo devotion, devoting their two week, one two week session a year would, uh, at Fort Williams would uh, be Probably something that they qualify. would But I know they did a do. project on the um, Eastern Prom in Portland, and I don't think, I'm not sure if that was a weekend schedule project or a longer duration. They did something with the cemetery. Just my curiosity. I also hope that they will include poison ivy removal as part of their training. <laughs> There's well, a fierce like patch of poison ivy where we want this boardwalk. Um, I'm sorry. Was it? I had yeah, one, one other comment that occurs to me that, me that I, I, would, I did want to emphasize as I was driving over here. Um, as the board knows, since I'm serving something of a dual role, uh, not only uh, on the commission but also in the Keeper's Quarters Museum, as the committee, uh, commission council knows that that's going scheduled to open in, I think, June 1 now. July 1, excuse me. Sometimes. Uh, Maybe summer. But that, uh, you know, th there is some concern also about the, from the commission about, well, uh, trying to uh, coordinate what's happening at the museum with what we expect to be increased traffic. We hope to be increased traffic, at least, in, so far as it, Museum gift shop is going to be a uh, popular Good. attraction. Good, very valid concern. Thank so you. we'd like to have that flexibility as well. Um, in your basic maintenance, ongoing maintenance, um, does that include um, redoing or refurbishing part of the fitness course at the fort? Because we have this letter from a Northern General Services as far as um, liability for the town and compensation, and they specifically pointed out that that needed to be um, looked at a little more carefully. Those are the things that, that we review from time to time and uh, occasionally walk the course to make sure that the signs are in their proper condition and uh, the area that question in reference to that, you know, I think there's a much larger issue, you know, about liability that's, that's there rather than maintenance. I mean, all the structures work as they're designed to, but it's a question of the location of them and the, the ground below them. We had someone in file an insurance claim. I don't want to go into the details of it. To encourage I just, further it such just claims. specifically mentioned in this letter, so I just want to know. Any repairs would come out of that account. That account. One, one thing I would like to mention in terms of the whole discussion, it's been mentioned for toilets and 10000 and also for other means. The real expense of the toilets are not, not the toilets. It's the fact that there's no sewer. You know, you'd know, you have to put in the whole system, engineered system as well. So we would talking about more than just toilets. Are we talking a septic system? Yeah. We're talking yes. an engineered system. Septic system. Septic system. Yeah. Okay. I had one more question. Go ahead. The boardwalk is as illustrated here. Correct. On your, and any environmental or state requirements as far as building rights on the edge of the shoreline have, have those been considered and how detailed that process might be? I think those are the the, the the, the project is in that phase now, not only the engineering aspects, but also the concerns, I think, regarding what uh, permits we would need to do this work. Thank you, Carl. You got a question? No, no. Do we have other questions for the Fort Williams, represent Fort Williams Commission representatives? It looks to me like you're on the right track with your priorities. I, I, you know, it pains me as much as anybody, I'm sure, that we cannot consider allocating more money to the Fort Williams account. Um, as I've heard said, that you could allocate 200000 of that every year and you still wouldn't be happy. <laughs> but there's a lot we can do with it, and I think you know, keeping an eye on long-term maintenance is, again, something that's very valuable. The Commission has a very good history of coming to us with reasonable projects, and we appreciate that. I encourage you to continue along that vein. Um, we, when we get to that, specific line item. I'll see how fast I can get through it. <laughs> Thank you very much. The council will all have input. Thank you for being here. Bob, do you have any follow-up comments after that? Before we... No, I don't. Just one note on 
on the septic system itself, but we're going to try to put that in ourselves uh, from a public work standpoint. So, and it could be a chambered system or whatever. Yeah, we'll costs. have to get one designed. So, okay. do you have a volunteer that might be helping on that? I know someone that could probably design this one, reasonable rate. Thank you. Okay. General discussion of parks. Get home. <laughs> General discussion of parks issues, overall parks issues. <coughs> uh, go um, I'm looking at page 198 in the big book and page 30 on the computer printout. Full-time payroll, 46,956. Part-time payroll, 16,660. Most of benefits costs. Telephone, 560. Power, 1,000. Professional service, water, 3,100. Professional services, 5,080. Toilet rental, okay. Uniforms, 820. Equipment maintenance, 3,100. Alarm service, 300. Gasoline, which would be reduced a bit, um, 1,980. Heat, 1,050. Minor equipment, 500. Miscellaneous supplies, 500. Diesel fuel, 475. Park improvements. 18,000. Fort, Fort Williams improvements, which is what we've just heard, 30,000. Any council concerns on specifics there? Any? Oh, capital outlay? Okay. Zero. 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 Okay. So, it's zero. So that's going instead, basically, into the Fort Williams account. Okay. I got you. That's for the... It was originally at 4001. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Bill, did you have a comment? Yes. Sir. I want to know the difference between park improvements and fill rooms and Park improvements, um, basically, that's, again, fertilizer, seed, uh, loam, uh, contracted work on our athletic fields. Fort improvements are uh, items that are directly related to Fort Williams, whether people work on the bunkers, uh, the picnic shelter itself, uh, tree trimming, that's the sort of sorts. But also there are some items that come out of park improvements for the fort, whether that be fertilizer and, and seed. But Fort improvements is strictly Fort Williams related items. The park, the, park. Or the, board. the park improvement, so that takes all the, the school grounds maintenance, all the materials and work they do over there, as well as the help we give out to Little League with a few odds and ends, plus any money we might spend on any of the other little parcels we own around town. Thank you. All right, moving on to the tree account. Just, if I, I know it's getting late. Another thing that you'd be interested in, I think, Bill, on the 18000 is We'll use some of that money for the, the reclamation of the infields. I don't know if you've noticed Holman Field, you know, the baseball games. You know, we're, we're <coughs> trying to keep those infields in, in good shape, and uh, Bob is uh, in working with a uh, Winthrop, is it? Right. You know, I think they've really done a good job at, at trying to bring the infield back to the level when Derwood Holman took care of them. Uh, they'll never be at that uh, stage again, but uh, they're a lot better than they were a few years ago. I've had a lot of good comments on, on mm -hmm. the Holman Field how it's a, a premier field and we get a lot of comments from across the state with the condition that it's in. So our work is proving to be successful. It's noticeable, yeah. which is good. Anything else on parks? Trees. Trees. Yeah, I'll do it. Trees. Yeah. That Trees. follows Trees. parks. It's the continuation of the same stipend okay. for the tree warden and 14,000 from miscellaneous tree maintenance work. Yeah. Again, that, that does all the trimming, all the cutting uh, of trees. And uh, we had a report a couple of years ago that showed all the hazard trees in the community. And again, this is an area we probably ought to be spending four times what we are spending. 
uh, but Rick uh, does make the dollars stretch as hard as they can. It's, uh, she's always applying for these little mini grants, some of which hopefully will come in, but uh, really up there working hard. Uh, doing good job. Any concerns from counselors on the three accounts? Did we get that reimbursement from the state with the, on the trees? A couple of months ago, we were supposed to get four or five thousand dollars back from the state. <coughs> Anything else? Public works, going back to page 120. Account number 310. Thank you. As you know, 310 takes up the biggest portion of the public works budget. And this is the seventh budget that I've prepared for the council. And just when you think you've completed the budget and you complete your project, you're, you're back behind the eight ball again and, and the request and needs for services and, and programs and equipment and projects come up each year. And when I put the budget together, I really looked at the needs in each of those areas. It wasn't just a matter of trying to make the dollars fit, but to try to show you folks what the needs were for sidewalk replacement, for paving, for equipment, and, and let you make the decision as to you know, the extent of the, the work that you want to do. And even though we're in a recession and times are not good, our roads still need to be paved, our equipment needs to be replaced, personnel uh, need to be treated fairly and our services and programs uh, need to be taken care of. And whether times are good or times are bad, uh, the point that I tried to make in my cover letter was that these things go on and they're not affected by the economy. So the major increases in the highway budget are reflected in increased uh, dollars for sidewalk replacement, increased paving dollars, uh, truck replacement, and road improvements. Everything else has been <coughs> pretty much the same. We're still trying to get by with the <coughs> same amount of tools and equipment, uh, our sand budget, our salt. We're not increasing anything in those areas. And we're really not expanding any of these areas. We're really trying to maintain what we've done in the past, uh, with the exception of last year. Uh, but in the past years, we've just tried to maintain Again, what we have, we're not looking for additional trucks, we're not looking for additional personnel. We're really looking to, to keep what we have and take care of what we have. I guess that's it in a nutshell. Okay. It's always difficult as a counselor to not take the long-term view with public works. I know that, you know, if I were in your seat, I would feel that's what the council has been doing over the last number of years. And we will as always, do our best to keep in mind the long-term needs of public works. And I think, to me, anyway, they're becoming more apparent as I drive the roads in this town. So, um, that could open up a policy discussion. Maybe it would be better, well, better served to have that when we get to that specific line item that seems to be more expedient for our discussions today. Okay. Any counselors want to touch on general public works concerns before we start going through the pages. All right, I'm on page 120 in the budget book and on page 17 in the computer printout. We're looking at full-time payroll at 262,560, part-time payroll at 5,000. And then overtime payroll at 38,600. And we have a post on benefit costs. We have down to telephone, 1,800. Power, 5,300. I got something on that one. Yes, sir. If I may, why isn't there an increase in that one comparison to the one in the public safety? That, that's one of the problems with this new rating 
MS, the, the, whatever this, I forget what they call it, this new rating system that the PUC has come up with. It, it hits certain buildings and other, other ones it doesn't. Some people have actually seen their rates decrease. Uh, it, it all depends on demand surges and a whole lot of other factors and uh, public safety got nailed. Okay. Thank you. There was a discrepancy. Oh, Jane. Jane. I'm sorry, my page is a misnumber or something. 120 comes after 150s. I'm a little late, but I wanted to get back to full time pay. Anyway. Sure. Uh, the amount of money in here is the same amount as last year. Yes, it is. But there's a but you put in an additional person. Is it's still removed. Oh. Okay. Well, last year it's. Mm. That's all. That's fine. Right. Right. Okay. We're up to water and sewer, fourteen hundred. Dues and membership at one eighty. Conferences and meetings, seven fifty. Equipment rental, two thousand. Uniform rental, three thousand two hundred. Equipment maintenance, thirty-six thousand five hundred. <coughs> My question to you on that, Bob, is even if a new L, L yeah. Even if we approve the allocation for a new truck, you need that increase in the equipment? That's correct. We're just seeing increases in, in labor rates. Uh, if we have to have something done on the outside or oil filters have just gone up. It's, we're just seeing slight increases year after year in those items. To give you one example, last year we budgeted 35 540 We spent 41294 mm -hmm. This year, 35 540 was budgeted. Uh, we had already spent twenty-six thousand dollars at twenty-five nine seventy-four, but that's you know we get a lot of bills still to come in. Plus we have April, May, and June. So that can be a very volatile account depending on repairs or the unforeseen or for whatever reason it can. It's really just a an estimated figure it can be below or much much higher than that. Okay, thank you, Phyllis. Does, is this relates just to public works vehicles? It doesn't relate to school buses. That's correct. <coughs> maintenance 200, building maintenance 2000, storm drain cleaning 8400, pavement markings on the highway 8860, curbing maintenance 3000, highway road resurfacing 60,000. <coughs> I'd like to propose a, a cut of twenty thousand dollars in the road resurfacing account. From sixty thousand to forty thousand. Yes. <clears throat> Why? Well, well I think. On that, well, yeah. I mean, I think Oakhurst certainly um, needs to be done. I, uh, I'm in the hopes of finding some cuts somewhere. Um, it's a major uh, two hundred percent increase uh, with a huge ballpark of numbers and uh, that's my proposal. I, I'm going to try to find some cuts somewhere within the budget and that's uh, the first place that I'm going to propose a cut. You just mentioned Oakhurst, Wayne. That, yeah. The Oakhurst is already funded already so that, that it's yeah. not for this. Bob's letter that we just got recently. Mm -hmm. um, I can find it in my pile. Yeah. No, it's not on that Oak list. Oak Ridge is not on that list. It's on the uh, roadway drainage improvement fiscal year 90 through 95. The Oakhurst is. Well, no, I didn't want to cut Oakhurst. I, I no. absolutely, positively think Oakhurst has to be done. It's been uh, budgeted to be done this yeah. spring. Yeah, um, that's right. Are we still left in this to do it? Yeah, I, I'm not. Again, I'm not running the Public Works Department. Um, what um, I think what is happening is that we're getting a major um, piece of apparatus in Public Works this year uh, that I don't have a problem with. Um, and I think we have, I think we have made some substantial increases both in the uh, roadway drainage projects coming up as the, the last item in Bob's budget Sidewalks is a substantial 350% increase. Um, the guardrail, I mean, over at, uh, uh, you know, off of the um, Little John Road there, uh, another, you got 100%. There, there are various numbers um, 
and large sums of money that, um, that I think we can find some money to cut by um, perhaps limiting the, uh, the number of projects that uh, can be done. Bob has very nicely um, given us a sheet of a variety of projects, I mean, uh, uh, including Shore Road and, and um, Cottage Farms Road, Sawyer Road, Ocean House, Fowler. All of these areas, uh, I, I'm not going to suggest one over the other should not be done. I think that's Bob Malley's job. But I am going to su suggest a, uh, a cut of $20,000 uh, for Bob to figure out how to do that. I believe we, those decisions tend to be made in the fall. Paving decisions? The, you know, which if, if you were allocated, <coughs> the budget was allocated at 40000 then in the fall we get some kind of report or have some discussion. Well, as traditionally, projects. I take that money and figure out what we have for available tonnage, and it's based on uh, roads that need paving or shimming, and, and traditionally it hasn't come before the council. So the, the regular re okay. resurfacing doesn't come back with the major projects. But the uh, major? Only the road projects. Yes, the major projects. I bring that up because part of this list, this is where the signalization yep. is or not. No. Yeah. Okay. no I, I think maybe it's important you, you discuss two items together. Road resurfacing and the Count 403 roadway drainage project. Yeah. Last year both were cut in half. This budget is, is in essence proposing to restore the amounts that have been cut the previous year. It's an increase between the two of them of $105,000. And you know, I, I would think that you might want to discuss the issues together and decide how much hopefully all of that 105,000 that you want to replenish. Okay, that's where I mean, I'd, I'd appreciate if you consider the issues together because it's, it's, right. you get cross. Well, I think in all honesty, I mean, I look at it as, as one sum of money that you can diddle around back and forth. So I, I agree with the town manager. I, I was going to propose a cut of $20,000 in the roadway drainage project. So I guess you know, I'll just I'll just propose a forty thousand dollar cut with the total. I mean, if you want to just deal with it at once, that's my preference. So, because you just have to revisit the next item, and if you decide to put those two together, how much you want to invest? I think that's a my <coughs> decision. I was bringing that up because under the roadway drainage, roadway and drainage improvements um, item is the signalization along. Um, Route 77, and I know this council did say publicly that we would, you know, be looking at that this spring and such. And that's one of the major type of improvements that comes back to the council for final <coughs> approval. So that's something that, you know, we don't right now allocate the funds for those specific projects in that account. That's right. I do not feel it's proper to start doing that now. What I'm saying is we are not going to right now make a decision on that signal signalization, if I can learn how to say it. But that would be most likely come back to the council for discussion in the fall. That's cool. Is that? I think what I'm saying is we have a total of 200000 in this budget for roadway drainage improvements mm -hmm. and road resurfacing. I think you need to make a judgment as yeah. to how much of that 200000 we wish to spend. Okay. And we've got a. <laughs> We've got a proposal right now from from Wayne to cut that by forty thousand. Is that That's right. I understand that part? I just heard another proposal to cut fifty thousand. We just asked him if he'd take it. That's all. It's oh, getting late. I'm not sure that's the question. It is, but the, the director has put together some numbers on that he might may wish to share with you on the overall issue as well. Well, obviously, I'm not in favor of cutting any of the money. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a second issue. But I did some comparative. Uh, costs and paving budgets in other communities, just to give you an idea. Now, Grant, uh, some of the other communities have more road miles than we do, but I broke it down into what they spend on paving per mile of road that they maintain. And Scarborough, for example, spends $1,304 per mile of road that they maintain. Their paving budget is roughly $150,000. Now, granted, they have 115 miles, which is almost double of what we have, but you compare the amounts, it's a considerable budget. Freeport, for example, spends $200,000 for just paving alone. How much per mile? Per mile is uh, 2857 uh, Yarmouth spends 1250 
Wyndham spends $2,000 per mile. This past year, we were spending $351 per mile. The paving budget is $20,000. And uh, just to give you an idea, in fiscal 82, our paving budget was $55,000. And in the late 70s, it was, it was held at that amount for, for at least three or four years. And it, it really doesn't go very far. To give you an example, $40,000 basically paves one mile of road. That's assuming you shim it and overlay it, say, an inch and a half. So it, it doesn't go very far. So the money that we have allocated this year is going to go for about a half a mile. And once you do a street, uh, a couple of side streets, and maybe a short section on the main line, you really haven't gone very far. So I think we need to get back up to a level that we were 10 years ago and, and stay there. I would only, I mean, I agree with Bob, and, and certainly because Bob is so talented at what he does, it doesn't surprise me at all that he has these figures for us this morning. Um, I think the issue is that what we're being asked to do is to jump the budget from $95,000 to $200,000. It's a huge jump. Um, and just like even if we win the PUC case uh, with the um, town-city differential on water and hydrants, I doubt it's going to be an all or nothing. I suspect it'd be a phase-in type of thing over five years to, to minimize the impact on anyone. Uh, I totally agree with Bob's issues. I, I think that we have to get it back up to uh, where the infrastructure is not falling apart, but I think this particular jump is excessive. Bill. I agree with you. <coughs> I agree with Councilor Creamy as far as the reductions and I had gone a little farther than he had. I was going to move it back to last year, take 40,000 out of the high road, road resurfacing, and 20 out of the other one. So I'm hearing a range of <coughs> potential cuts between 40,000 and 60,000. That's correct. I too agree with Wayne's comments and I'm not, I will, I think this is a place that most likely is it going to end up with some cuts. I'm sorry that has to no, happen. No, I, I assume that. I just yeah. the more the merrier, so to speak. You know, it's, the needs are out there. There's That's no right. question about it. And, and uh, each year that goes by, more roads are due for paving. And it's again, it's strictly a policy decision on your part. But whatever you give me, I'm sure we can lay down and, and pave and more than justify. I you can justify this paving budget very easily any year you come in here. I do. Thank you for not hiking it up to something that you cannot justify. So saying, well, they're going to cut it anyway, so they'll cut it back to what I really want. That's not how this town operates. And I thank you, that's the not manager, for not letting budget. that happen. Yeah, that, that does happen other places. And thanks for not doing that. Well, no, I, I agree with you. And I think you should come in with a budget that you feel that you should have to work with and keep the roads. And if they go to hell, it's our fault, as you might say if we cut you back. But I just feel the way times are, I think we can get by. Now, if this is all resurfacing, how about, yeah, you've got any roads this year you're going to reclaim? Well, Shore Road is our highest priority. And what money that is allocated really depends on how much work we do on Shore Road. And because I, I don't feel you get the mileage out of the money when you start reclaiming them and over resurfacing them. I think just the opposite, Billy. Uh, I think we only need to, to look at what the neighboring, like, like South Portland did on Fickett Street, where they just threw a lot of pavement on top of something that was already bad, and it's already falling apart. I would much rather spend a little bit more money on a particular section of road and have a longer term investment. And I think the area Shore Road in particular that, that is the most problematic at this point is from Surf Road up to the old main entrance of the fort. And you know, to just throw pavement over bad road, uh, you know, we know there's un underlying drainage problems. I don't think it's good investment. Uh, you know, to quote George Flaherty, "Drainage, drainage, drainage," uh, is the way to uh, you know maintain roads. So, you know, while you pay more per mile, I think over the over the life of the road, you uh, you're a lot better off investing in it rather than keep increasing the level of the road so you have more drainage problems and driveway problems. On, on the, the other issue of the, the money, uh, you know, I strongly recommended the budget for the 200000 but I'm a realist. You know, I knew this was going to be the area that was cut. Bob knew it was going to be cut. Uh, you know, I was, uh, 
you know, I think you need to make an additional investment in this area. I think if, if you bring it up to, uh, you know, 150,000, 160,000 uh, from the level it's at, uh, I think, you know, that's a, a forward move and I would encourage you to move in the direction of Wayne's cut to, uh, you know, 40, 50 range. I would like to say with the resurfacing versus reclaiming, I think that I'm very always willing for the council to give input, but I think we have to let some of those decisions rest with our professionals. Um, I would like it to putting new shingles over a roof rather than replacing the, sub, the boards underneath when you have to sometimes if you notice the problem. I know which one's more expensive, personal experience, but you get a better product in the end. <coughs> So. You know, you, you look at your own street, Billy, if we had just thrown pavement on top of that last year instead of reclaiming it, you know, we're still getting a little movement up and down. But, you know, this time of year, the last couple of years before that was done, you couldn't even barely drive on that road this time of year. Yeah, we still got water running down the road and out in the ditch. That's Because it's selling and there was reclaimed and it didn't get graded yeah. properly. Billy. So, <coughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I think this is kind of tough times and what have you. And you, you kind of patch up until you get things turned around. And, and I think it's a proper way of going. You get more mileage out of it, and you get more roads done and smoothed up. Billy, I was wondering if you'd uh, compromise with me and, and take Irv's suggestion. Uh, you I wanted, don't hear You wanted 60 off. I wanted 40 off. Irv said take 50 off. You'll come between us. How do you like that? Do okay. you want to be between those two? <laughs> No, 150. I, like I said, do you want to be between those I two? I think that's a real I think. reasonable proposal because it adds 55,000 to those two accounts, but it, it also cuts back about 50,000. But what was proposed? I, can I think it's very reasonable. Will you, can Bob tell us if that is the case? We had like it from out of the two accounts. Well, again, I, I think sure. in time, I would like to see the two accounts merge into one. Let's do real, it. Consider the merge. You know, we do it's that? really easy that way if you run over a little bit on your pay, you've got a little yeah. bit of a cushion to run over your project. Yeah. Yeah. It should be considered as one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do away. We'll have to put 003 as the only account. Good idea. But I was going to vote for no cut and the whole thing. Which Michael, after conversations we had, I said, no, you're not. You're being a, a non realist again. Um, <laughs> I had some heated conversations <laughs> with Carl. But, but my justification <laughs> is. is Several fold. Uh, a, and that the fact that to the average person riding on a road, one is safety, uh, two is wear and tear on a car, which, yes, it doesn't cost the person out of his pocket for taxes, but if he has to replace his shocks and everything, that costs a hell of a lot more than 10 cents in taxes. Uh, I think that there's other budgets, maybe not municipal, that could absorb some of the cost of the use of the roads, once again, as a safety factor. Uh, one thing that was just tied up, we'll just throw this in, and, and so the sidewalk improvement is if you had sidewalks to different areas, could more people walk instead of using uh, student transportation, which would reduce those costs, and I think your benefit in the long run is, is paid back more than a hundredfold. Uh, so I, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, if you're improving your, your infrastructure, you're saying a lot of things that the town cares, especially Shore Road, if you have increased traffic going to the port. I think your, your benefit in the long run, you can't put a price on it. Uh, and I, you know, it's as important as every other facility and infrastructure is in town. Uh, you got to get there, and you want to get there with comfort. And uh, mm -hmm. just like the roads are, are cleared of, of ice and snow, and I think a lot of people kind of like that feeling to drive around like that. The same thing is you want good roads underneath there. So I'm not for any cuts. But not for any cuts, okay. Bill. I think I could support the $150,000. I have to think about it a little bit more. But I'm concerned in your saying that in the fall we'd be considering whether or not the town wants to contribute the $25,000 as our share to signalization of these two intersections. Don't we have to have that in the budget before we can consider it in the fall? No. So if we decide now, no, it's, we won't consider it in the fall. Is that correct? No, what, what happens is for any, other than for the road and surfacing, for all those other projects, <coughs> they come to the council and you have a yay or nay vote on them. So you, know, you, decide, you look at the amount that's in the roadway drainage improvement account and you decide what you want to do with it. <laughs> 
You can vote on it. You know, I tried to get you. I see. I see Jade over here, you know, wanting to, to cast her vote in favor of those projects prior to her leaving the council. You know, I don't. I, I, I tried to get you to vote on it a few months ago. If you, you know, whenever you want to schedule that particular vote. My my question is: Are we considering the twenty-five thousand to be included in this budget no. that might be used? Then if not, where is that twenty-five thousand dollars going to come from? Out of the way. It, no, it would come out of the the one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and you decide if that's a priority within the one hundred and fifty. So it is. So it is. So, it's 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 so that's what I want to know. Yeah. It will be there in the yeah. budget. Uh, yeah, it will be there if you choose to spend it on that. <coughs> if you choose right to right spend right. it on something else. There's money in there that could be the allocated. Yes or no? It's There's money in there yeah. that could be allocated to the signalization, but that decision for its allocation is not right. Made. But it already it will be accounted for in this That's present right. budget. That's right. In this budget and in, in this item that we just made a combined item. Mm -hmm. okay. It would be less than twenty-five thousand now because of the new Federal Surface Transportation Act and how MDOT's responding to that. Mm -hmm. it's nice to put things off for once. Okay. Bill. I just want to respond to Council Pearson's comment about better roads and what have you. I think if people drive in conditions of the roads, they wouldn't have the damage to the automobiles. They try to drive faster than the condition of the road. And uh, so I, do, I don't kind of look at it that way. We're providing the roads as best possible with uh, so much money. And uh, other than the springtime, I don't think the roads are are really that bad and you resurface them and you do different things and you're still going to get up and down you know, when you've got the frosts and stuff in the winter. Yeah. I'd like to get a feel from counselors on the amount they would like to see cut from this. I think that will help us as we get further along. And I've heard cut 40, cut 50, cut 60. Excuse me. <laughs> And cut nothing. On cut nothing. Cut nothing. Oh, cut 40. Yeah. Cut 50. 50 cut 60. 50, um, 50, right? Let's put out. Cut 50,000. Yeah. I hear one. I hear two yeses. Go Three yeses. Yeah. I'm a yes. Four. Yeah. Yes, yes, five. Out, there's a no. And there's a yes. So that is cut 50,000. What'd you say? That was our. Okay. All right, Bill. Anything else people need to talk about with that? Yeah, good. Highway contingency. I'm lost momentarily. Page 130. Yeah. It's on page 130. It's 1,000. Highway contingency, 1,000. Office supply, 600. Highway gasoline, that would be reduced somewhat, 4,700. Heat, 4,710. Minor equipment and tools, 1,500. Miscellaneous supplies, 750. Gravel, 900. Where are we at? Gravel. Back on the gasoline, gasoline it's 90 cents in the annual furnace maintenance. Gallons, it says, are 4,900. That's the heat to place. You're Does on I have to increase that this year? You're on yes. gasoline. He's on heat. Page 131. Yeah. 131. Yeah. What's your question? Yeah. Is that going to, have you increased the gallons there for the addition? And is that 90, going to be 90 cents again this year? Will that cover well, the new building? I, I want to revisit that. Okay. Heat as well. Yeah. Revisit. Revisit. I couldn't believe how low we're paying now for again. Okay. So you want to revisit the cost of heating oil? Yeah. That's right. That here? Across, the, across the whole budget. Okay. I think we can probably save a couple grand. Heating oil is, uh, right now we're paying 56 cents a gallon, I think. Jesus. Can we start our own oil company? <laughs> but that, but I, I'm not going to be that optimistic <laughs> no, in revisiting us. No, not with the uh, committees. I think you know those oh, discount yeah. trucks out there are about, <coughs> about 80 cents a gallon. Now. 72 is uh, Okay, highway gravel, 900. <coughs> Winter sand, 4,800. Salt and calcium, 38,500. 
Either yeah. early with this year's winter. Yeah. As far as sand, we've used approximately 1,380 yards to date. And to give you an idea, we've had we had an easy month in January and February, so we really skated for almost two months. So the amount could have been considerably higher than it is. Now we have uh, enough on hand, but I've budgeted 1,200 yards, and again, that's to get us back on track, but it's only an average figure. If you have a, a busy winter, you're going to be using much more than that. So how much of a surplus, though, would, would we have going into this budget? I, we've probably got five, seven hundred yards, give or take. Probably five that we can get to very easily. So, so far, we've, we've, we've paid for $25,800. $17 worth of salt. We That doesn't include the bills from this past weekend. That's okay, right. So we've minutes. used uh, approximately 820 tons to date, 120 of which went into our sand pile to be mixed with sand. So we've put down approximately 700 tons. But again, that doesn't include what we put down last weekend. And again, that's just an average figure, too. It can be as that's high as 1,500, it can be as low as five, depending on the weather. So we may have some savings in this year's budget? We may. I figured that into my survey. Well, we should. That's part of the surplus that we're hoping to yeah. get. That's that 40000 in general savings. Okay. We don't have any more freak snowstorms. Yeah. Enough of those already. Is, Ice storms. Is that an estimated uh, ton on salt yes, price? Is. That is it. When you go for bid and whatever. Mm -hmm. The bid price this year was thirty two thirty three. We're anticipating a slight increase. Okay. Very slight. Anything else on this? Not right now. Thank you. Top of 134, hot and cold mix. 5,400, uh, guardrail, 2,000. Um, yeah. Guardrail, what's, does that run into? Uh, it's been banged in, uh, banged up a number of times. It's uh, it's basically very dilapidated. And the council looked at it Two years. here a couple of years ago. And it was eliminated from the budget at that time, and it's very unsightly. Uh, I, assuming that it's still safe, that the posts are in the ground it's to the depth that they should be, but it's really more of, a, of an appearance and unsightliness. Were there any reported accidents though at that, or is it just a good old hit and run, bang into it? You know the guardrail we're talking about. Yeah, the one right at the steep you know, shop corner. I don't think there's ever been a reported accident. No. It's no. been there maybe 20, 25 years, and it's, it's, it's more of a, you know... It's an eyesore. It's an eyesore in the middle of a nice residential neighborhood. Okay. That's really If you want to address it this year or not. No, it's pretty ugly. Have you, have you checked for erosion around the post? No. The road is crowned. <coughs> In the opposite direction, so, so you don't have run all the drainage is running the other way. Oh, I could bank turn instead. Well, it's, it's super elevated it right now. <laughs> yes, but I it was worked on about 10, 15 years ago, isn't it? About 10 years ago. Did they put new ends on it? Painted it. Yeah. And the paint's been chipping off. I think it should be fixed. I'm not. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not. Oh, I have no problem. Yeah, I, just, I think we're. It hasn't been, been there the life of the <laughs> Is what I want to point out. No, I, I just wanted to see if it was uh, something we could. Claim anybody, claim anybody want to eliminate that guardrail? Okay. Sign material, 3,700. Sidewalks, 9,000. <laughs> yeah, I want to lop off 3,000 on that. Lop off? Yeah. And any discussion? Sounds good to me. Would all of that 9,000 have gone to CPUS? Yes, it would. So if we take a few thousand from that, does that mean you can only do a part of it? It looks like a patch job. Is that going to be what would you, you, you do it as far as you, you can, can one year, and next year you continue it? Concrete, mm -hmm. concrete again. We're not going to do it every other. Concrete with concrete, anything that's asphalt, we, we maintain as asphalt. Okay. Well, wouldn't you, I mean, the, to do the project, you do a part of it, and then you continue the project next year. You wouldn't do every other to make it look stupid, right? No, well, you wouldn't. You'd continue. Oh, with, no, you'd continue yeah, of course. Right. Well, that's well, just to make the council look bitch. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to give Loxley the guardrail, I mean, we don't want to create an eyesore on Seaview. Rather do 390, you're going to do 300. Right. 
we're going to get the stencil, we're going to paint the council of numbers on the side. <laughs> <laughs> right where it ends. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm just wondering if there are other sidewalks in town that he has in line down in the future that need to be addressed. There are many. I'm sure. Oh, instead no of end. just, uh, well, sure are. this is the yeah, exact same. Should be installed. Yeah. See, he was the most pressing need. Yeah, see, but there understand. are sidewalks on Cottage Farms, yeah. Elizabeth Road, Scott Dyer, where they have fallen apart. Yeah, I mean, anything that's concrete is we're having problems yeah, with right. Island View, Mountain View. So you're replacing concrete with concrete. It's the exact same issue we're discussing with the roadways. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's really so a question of how much, much you want to replace. How much of bricks? Ooh, no. <laughs> All right. Is there an agreement to cut 3,000 from this? Two or three. Two or three. Two or three. Did you say three? I said three. That's what the proposal was. How was that? Jane? No. 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 Phyllis? No. Wayne? Yes. yes. Carl? Mm, no. Okay. All right, I'll propose 2,000 now. Okay, 2,000. No. Notes. No. Okay, Phyllis, I'm not no. Going to win. Just a moment, please. Deal. Phyllis, no. Wayne, yes. Carl? No. Bill? I say yes. You want to cut 2,000? Jane? No. No. Or? no. Okay, we're not going to win on that. Forget it. Okay. Dead issue. See if you have, you have a sidewalk. All righty. Highway storm drain material, 8,000. Diesel fuel, 12,800. Those yeah. diesel accounts will be cut back as well. Okay, we'll get fuel. okay so we'll, we'll relook all gasoline and yeah. fuel accounts. I think between all of them, we'll probably save about five. <coughs> okay, that would be terrific. And capital outlay we have already dealt with. No. Totally. No. Capital outlay. We dealt with other outlay. All right. Capital outlay. This is, is there a new truck in here? Yes, sir. Anybody want to talk about the new 69, truck? 69,000 is the, the recommended amount for this account. 69. It shows in the book at 87. Is that right? Yeah. It shows on the page for 69. Yeah. So what did you cut? Page 138 is Everything. The line. I cut the diesel power generator and what's left is the truck and the two truck mounted spray systems. One of the 66,000, including all of the other two at 1,500 apiece. There were also um, a generator had been requested that's been locked up. The truck is out back too, and when you go to lunch, you'll look at it. I was wondering. <laughs> we had visual displays in the parking lot. I was going to put that in the garage. I was going to ask him if he brought some of the truck. If that's really in bad shape, I don't think it should be out in the elements. <laughs> okay, this is for a new truck to replace the 1977 Hulk out in the parking lot. I hope you got a chance to read the narrative that I put together on it. So mm -hmm. I think the most telling portion.